Hello and welcome to sentence diagramming exercise number 14. In this exercise you will practice joining together independent clauses to make compound sentences. The sentences will be a little bit more complicated than in sentence diagramming exercise 13, but not as complicated as they will be in sentence diagramming exercise 15. If you haven't done the warm-up, I really hope that you're not looking at the screen right now because we're about to go over the warm-up. I hope you did it already. Uh, the fanboy's words, for and nor but or yet so. They are the coordinating conjunctions, words that join together things that are equal in value. Match the term with its definition. One, phrase, that is D, any group of words is a phrase. Uh, Cuisinart, Saturday, fire truck, that's a phrase. Doesn't make any sense, but it's a phrase. Clause, E, a group of words that contains a subject and a predicate. That means whether or not a group of words can be a sentence all by itself. So this, the clause, for example, when I was traveling in Ireland, that clause can't be a sentence by itself, but uh, it is still a clause. It has a subject, I, and a predicate, was traveling. Three, independent clause, a clause that can be a sentence by itself. That means it has a subject, it has a predicate, and it can be a sentence by itself. That makes it an independent clause. Four, dependent or subordinate clause. We'll start working with these in a while. Uh, a clause that cannot be a sentence by itself is a subordinate clause. Compound sentence is a sentence made up of two or more independent clauses and joined together by either a comma and a fanboy's word or a semicolon. And a sentence fragment is an incomplete sentence. It may or may not be a clause. All right, so I the I hope you follow the directions carefully, and I hope that you put the comma in the right place when you constructed your compound sentence here. I wrote, the snow blanketed the city, comma, yet school was not canceled, period. And here's my diagram of it. Snow blanketed city, the snow, the city, yet school was canceled, not. There we go. That's the warm-up. Uh, let's erase and scroll up, and we'll start working on the practice sentences. All right, here we are. Again, remember, we label the parts of the sentence first, then the part of speech of each word, then we diagram the sentence. We're treating underlined phrases as single words. Let's do number one together, and then you, num you do number, try number two on your own, and we'll go over it. Sentence number one. For fun, I want to read Divergent, but the library doesn't have any more available copies. The first thing you need to do is figure out where the clauses start and stop. Do that now. Okay, I hope you can see that for fun, I want, to read a diver I want to read Divergent could be a sentence by itself, and the library doesn't have any more available copies could be a sentence by itself. They're joined together with the coordinating conjunction, but you will find it as these sentences get more and more complicated that it will be simpler to deal with one clause at a time. So please, starting by parenthesizing the prepositional phrases, identify the parts of sentence, subject, predicate, direct object, predicate adjective, or predicate nominative, and if there is one indirect object in this first clause. Pause the video and then we'll catch up. Okay, I hope that this is what you got. For fun is a prepositional phrase, I is the subject, want to read is the predicate, and divergent is the direct object. Pause the video again and label the parts of speech just for this clause. Okay, for is a preposition, fun is a noun. I is a subject, that's a noun. Want to read is a verb, divergent is a noun. Okay, well while we're here, why don't we just diagram that clause. Pause the sentence, and cons I mean pause the playback and construct your main line using the parts of speech, uh, excuse me, using the parts of the sentence.
Okay, I hope this is what you got. I is the subject, want to read is the predicate, divergent is a direct object, so it's separated from the predicate with a vertical line that does not cross the main line. There are two words left, for fun. What question does for fun answer? Hmm, and where does it go in the diagram? Hmm. Well, I hope you can tell that for fun is the reason why I want to read divergent, and if it answers the question why, that means it is an adverb, oh my gosh, good for you, and that means it's going to be diagrammed off of the Predicate, good job. Now pause the sentence and diagram but the coordinating conjunction, or pause the video and diagram but the coordinating conjunction. All right, get ready. Here we go, we're moving on to the next clause. Do we do I and want to read and divergent? For fun, but, okay, we're ready to move on. The library doesn't have any more available copies. Pause the video to parenthesize any prepositional phrases you see and identify the parts of sentence. Ready, go. All right, I hope that this is what you got, that library is the subject, does have is the predicate, and copies is the direct object. Remember that the int is going to be an adverb. Okay, the next step is to identify the parts of speech and write the part of speech underneath each word. Pause the video and do it. Okay, I hope you got something like this. The is an article, library is a noun. Does have, that's the verb, nt is an adverb, any is an adjective, more is an adjective, available is an adjective, and copies is a noun. Now, with any more and available, if you labeled one of those as, one or more of those as adverbs, I, I can actually live with that as long as it's not available. That one definitely describes copies. If you want to think about these as available, more, how available, more available, um, you can try to do that, uh, but notice that you can take out any two of them. We can say the library doesn't have any copies, and then any would be an adjective describing copies. We could take out more and say the library doesn't have any available copies, and that still makes sense. So any and available could both be adjectives. And we could take out available. Library, the library doesn't have any more copies. That still makes sense. That's a pretty good case for these each being able to describe copies and therefore being an adjective, right? Doesn't have any copies, doesn't have more copies, doesn't have available copies. I kind of think they're adjectives. We could argue about it later if you want to though, but you're gonna have a tough time convincing me because I'm just a video. All right, uh, pause the sentence, uh, pause the video and construct your diagrams mainline. Okay, I hope you got this. Library does have copies. Now, following rule of sentence diagramming number two, nouns and verbs go on horizontal lines, modifiers go on diagonal lines connected to the words they modify. Please complete the rest of the sentence by diagramming the rest of the words. We got library does have and copies so far. That leaves you with the, nt, any, more, and available. Pause the video, diagram it. And I hope you got something like this. The library doesn't have copies. What kind of copies? Any more available copies. Any more available. Nt. Okay. Sentence number two. Let's move on. Sentence number two reads, Jack and Diane want to marry each other, yet their plans for the future seem unclear. 
And just so you know, uh, that there's a song by a man named John Cougar Mellencamp from the mid-1980s that was called Jack and Diane. And it was actually about this, like the two 16-year-old kids who are in love with each other but don't really have plans for the future. Okay, so start by uh, identifying where the clauses start and stop. This is a compound sentence. Why don't you pause the video or like not look at the video, at least while I'm working as quickly as I can, and then we'll go over and then you pause it until you're finished and then we'll go over it. Ready, break. Okay, if you're not done yet, you should pause the video at this time because I'm going to start going over it. So if you are done, you know, but we're going to go over it now. If you're not done, pause it and then play it again when you're ready to go over it. All right, here's the sentence. Jack and Diane want to marry each other, yet their plans for the future seem unclear. Jack and Diane want to marry each other. That is one independent clause right there, joined by the coordinating conjunction yet to... We'll find out when we get the words back. Okay, that's an independent clause joined with by the coordinating conjunction yet to the second independent clause in the sentence, which is their plans for the future seem unclear. Here's the first clause. Jack and Diane, this clause has two subjects. Oh, ooh, things are getting complicated. Two subjects, Jack and Diane, but they're doing one predicate. They want to marry. They want to marry what? Each other. Each is the adjective, other is the direct object. So Jack and Diane want to marry other. Subject, subject, predicate, direct object. Jack is a noun, Anne is a coordinating conjunction, Diane is a noun, want to marry is a verb, each is an adjective describing other, and that's how it's diagrammed. Yet, yet, now we move on to the second clause. Plan, uh, for the future is a prepositional phrase, plans is a subject, seem is the predicate, unclear is a predicate adjective. There is an adjective, it's a possessive, we will diagram it on a lazy L when the time comes. Plans is a noun, for is a preposition, the is an article, future is a noun, seem is a verb, and unclear is an adjective. Now we diagram it, remember besties are joined at the hip, boos are joined at the lip, and compound sentences or independent clauses are joined by conjunctions at the predicate. Plans is the subject, seem is the predicate, unclear is the predicate adjective. Okay, the words that remain are there, on a lazy L because it's a possessive. There, whose plans? Their plans. What kind of plans? Plans for the future. Seem, seem what? Seem unclear. And there we go. I wish you much success with the independent practice on the reverse side. Uh, good day and have a pleasant tomorrow.